Hello folks, my name is Damien and you may remember me from such episodes as how not to kill a Toyota inverter. Well, as the song says, whoops, I did it again. This time, our victim is the IS300 inverter from our deranged Rover P38 project. And I had intended making a quite a different video for you to, today, featuring dual motor driving and some serious rock crawling in the driveway. And by rock crawling, I mean more like pallet crawling. But we'll get back to that as we have been temporarily, um, temporarily diverted by an exploded capacitor. Yes, folks, we have killed another capacitor in another Toyota inverter. And today, um, I decided to do a bit more investigation as to what could be causing the problem. Now, re recall last time with the Prius inverter from the E39 that we had connected the power to the wrong area of the inver inverter. And I kind of theorized that based on a few things. I'm certain that it contributed. Um, but from what I'm observing here on the bench today, it may not in fact have been the main cause. So, the Lexus IS300H inverter power stage here basically only has one area that you can connect uh, to the main high voltage bus and it's pretty near like it's within maybe 50 mil of where the power comes in uh, from the booster st stage uh, during the normal operation of this inverter. So we still suffered from our kind of capacitor failure here and I did a bit of an autopsy on this one. Fortunately, I spotted this very early on and was able to turn off the power before we did any damage any place else. Uh, but I'll give you a close up on this, but it's pretty much, there's a two big, big pinhole type things blown in the, in the dielectric of our cap. And we'll observe that it was in the part that was closest to the high voltage terminals. So anyway, not a lot more we can learn from that. So what I decided to do was leaving all of the settings in the inverter the same, bring it in here, power it on the bench and I'll observe uh, the DC bus under various conditions. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get you guys in on the silly scope here and we're going to show you uh, some of the traces. So what we've got is we have our inverter power stage. We're driving the MG1 section at the minute. We've just got a little, a little bit of one horsepower uh, motor here on the bench just to give us a little bit of a load. Our silly scope is connected um, pretty much on the high voltage terminals. We're feeding those from a 30 volt uh, 2 amp bench power supply. We've got no capacitance uh, connected on the back here at all. Uh, so we're going to show you three different things today. We're going to show you uh, running the motor here with the same settings that we had in the vehicle. Um, obviously the lower bus voltage here in a different motor, but other than that pretty much the same. And we'll show you what the DC bus looks like on the scope. We will then add a 1 microfarad 400 volt capacitor to our DC bus, and I won't spoil the fun. We will then change one parameter on the inverter front end and run it again. So. Without further ado, I'll get us zoomed in here and uh, we will start the fun. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is going to be looking at the DC bus. Same settings, uh, no capacitance, just running our little one horsepower motor here in open loop mode. So, 
what do we see straight away here well there's a lot of crap on the screen so let's see if we can tidy that for you a bit where's my trigger level gone here he is all right so what do we see here well let me get a little pointer don't mind this kind of jitteriness here that's not anything that we want to worry about but the thick yellow line here is the voltage that's on our DC uh, bus now this line here and you see the little earth symbol that represents ground so this part here is our approximately 30 volts DC we see the point where our transistors switch on and then the fun part where they switch off and that creates a massive inductive pulse that is creating a DC level here of nearly a hundred volts uh, so over three times that of our normal uh, DC level here now it's a very fast pulse but it is nonetheless there and if we out a little bit you're going to see that there's a lot of them so every time that we switch a transistor we're creating this almost 100 volts um, of inductive kickback now for those of you that may not be familiar with electronics and that I'm going to give you a simple analogy here I want you to Im imagine this being um, instead of all voltages and all this stuff I want you to imagine a car that has springs but no shock absor absorbers and we start here driving along a perfectly level road and then we hit a bump and then we come out of the bump and the car leaps up and oscillates and then we hit more bumps and 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 eventually our car is flying off into the air. Now I want you to imagine that we're inside a tunnel. And the roof of the tunnel is somewhere here. We're smashing into the roof of the tunnel. And that is what is exploding our capacitors. Now, what I hear you say, you have no capacitance on there, so you have effectively no shock absorber. Very true. So let's stop, and I'm going to fit this little 1 microfarad 400 volt capa capacitor. So that capacitor should have no problem dealing with our 100 volt spikes, eh? Something's changed. Yeah, we have some capacitance in there. Hang on a sec. D -d 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 -d. Oh, I'm an idiot. There's my trigger level gone. Come here, Triggy. Tricky, tricky, tricky. There we go. Oh, look. Hang up. Man, why can I trigger? There it is. Up, 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 up. There we are. Come on. Come on. You can trigger. You can trigger. Oh, look. Our high spike is all gone. Everything's going to be just fine. Let's sit back. I hate this part. I really hate this part. Oh no, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening to our capacitor? What could be wrong? Oh my god, there's smoke! Oh my god, there's smoke coming out of the capacitor. There is smoke coming out of the capacitor. Look at this, we got smoke. Our capacitor is smoking. It's gonna blow! What's wrong? What could be causing this? It's a 400 volt capacitor, right? Why is it not? Why is it going like the big capacitor? It's smoking. And as it smokes... Oh no, our spikes are getting bigger again. Mmm. Let's see. Oh yes, our spike is increasing. We're up to 45 volts now. And our capacitor is seriously uh, having a meltdown up here. Oh, the spike is getting bigger. So we're basically cooking our capacitor here. Because I have one setting wrong. 
in the uh, inverter. Look at it, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. Oh, there's more smoke. I'm scared, Motley. Let's get you in here close. You can see that smoke. I'm not putting my hand near that thing now because it's likely to go pop. Uh, I don't know if you can see the smoke, but it's, uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, here we go. Here's a nice view for you. Smoke from the capacitor and increasing, um, increasing spike on the oscilloscope. So, doesn't that look familiar? This is exactly what happened in the car. Anyone want to guess the cause? Okay, so next thing we're going to do is I'm going to switch off the inverter. Oh, I'm going to need a pliers or something. Just hang on a sec, that cap is going to be very warm. I'm going to take the capacitor out. There it is. <sighs> Smoldering away merrily there. I'm going to make one change to our uh, parameters. Save that parameter to flash. Now I'm going to take a new capacitor. So there's our previous one. This is a new one. This is again the very same one microfarad, 400 volt, just a cheap electrolytic. Uh, if I can get it to go into those crop clips for me now, we'll be all set. There we are. So, okay. Take two. Alright. What do we notice, first of all, here? Well, we notice that there's very little spikiness. Okay, let's increase our uh, level here. So what we're seeing here, we're seeing this is our DC bus. And it takes a kick down here because, again, the one microfarad cap is not nearly enough to, um, to smooth out the transition here. But we're going to notice that there's very little overshoot here uh, above the line. Now, I'm going to just leave this on um, and we're going to see that our capacitor is going to be perfectly fine. It's, go it's going to, you know, it's, it's not going to be 100% happy. It's not going to have a smoke and holiday like its friend here. Now, I made a very uh, grievous miscalculation um, when I was parameterizing these inverters. And I'm going to tell you what that is now. I will give you an another few demonstrations of that here. Um, but the upshot of it is that in the previous demo where we had this cap smoldering and uh, we have this cap here now that's, pr that's perfectly fine let me show you that it's fine um, I'll even risk putting my finger on it yeah, it's perfectly cold there's no temperature in that cap at all um, what I did was I set the dead time to zero. When we were running this cap, we had no dead time in our uh, system. So what is dead time? Well, dead time is the time between where we switch off the high side transistor and we switch on the, lo the low side. And there's six transistors in there. Uh, so we have dead time between the three pairs. And with the dead time set to zero, we get something called shoot through. And that part of the waveform that we saw sitting down the bottom here was when we had both transistors turned on. So what we were effectively doing was charging uh, the inductance uh, both in the inverter itself and more importantly in the battery cables and then when we would switch off the transistors unleashing that 
into something that will soak it and that something is our bus capacitors which is why I use a little small cap here just to kind of graphically demonstrate uh, the e e effect um, of that high frequency spikes and uh, that is what has been causing our problems folks again stick my finger on this other one here it's it's perfectly fine it's stone cold so there we go this is our lesson I'll bring you over here you can see it it's Sorry about that folks, just had another delivery from JLC PCB. So, there it is, little one mic cap, happy as a clam, motor turning, and uh, that's our entire setup there. So yeah, it seems that in the case of the IS300 inverter, we need quite a bit of dead time in there. So I'll do a few more experiments with that, but just wanted to give you guys a bit of a demo here um, as to what uh, you can, <laughs> as to, you know, the kind of a way you can get yourself into uh, a mess by assuming that something that applies to one inverter applies to another. So don't do it, folks keep some dead time in there so I will be posting about this on the open inv inverter forum anyway but just wanted to make a quick little video uh, just so you can see and again there's our little cap up there perfectly fine and we can do this all day I can dial the the dead time up and down and you'll see um, see the effects of it obviously We've got two motors and two power stages running here. Those effects are, they're not hugely magnified, but you can definitely see it. Uh, so that is what killed our capacitor, folks. So I'll leave it there. Hope you've enjoyed another episode in this little uh, crazy mini series on, uh, I don't know what we're going to call it, misdemeanors or misadventures in the, uh, Toyota uh, inverter region so as usual check those links in the description for the usual suspects patreon paypal github open inverter forum jlc pcb and whatever else i can stick in there for you um also don't forget to dislike unshare and unsubscribe from this gomi channel as quick as you possibly can and until then Happy dead time calculation.